the first lesson plants this is a simple scan copy of textbook where you are not going to get any other extra thing except the content and you just read it but the same thing we have developed in digital form pdf where you can get meaning of each and every word by just tapping on the word and also you can get the video of a particular image once if you tap on that in that way you can see in detail of each and every amazing things in this kind of pdf form so dear parents kindly tap suppose if you want to see this simply it will connect to right cortona where you can get the meaning for each and every word you can get and also you can see the palm image cursor changes into a palm this is nothing but you have to tap it on the image so that it will connect directly to youtube and you can easily come to know video wise detail of that particular image now i'll start before going through these topics or especially first lesson plans i'll just brief it out on a white board here then we'll come back to the lesson and we'll read each and every line and explain you i'll try to explain the maximum thing present out there now we are coming up with a lesson name called plants we know that the very vast diversity among living forms found on earth plants are basically classified into two one is you call it as terrestrial plants and another one is you call it as aquatic plants so what is the difference between these two terrestrial and aquatic before that you should know what do you mean by terrestrial terrestrial means land form that is present on land aquatic means present in water aquatic means water terrestrial means land based under terrestrial again the plants are divided present on mountains in plains present in plains then uh, plants in deserts in coastal areas you find in heavy rainfall areas that is rain forest you can say and uh, plants are present in swampy areas you call it as swampy areas that is wetland areas these are the topics you are going to deal in your textbook that is under terrestrial plants the plants which are present uh, on mountains plants which are present on plains plants which are present in deserts coastal areas mm, heavy rainfall areas and swampy areas similarly aquatic plants means the plants which are present in water this is widely divided again into three categories one you call it as floating floating plants second one you have a fixed plants and you have underwater plants so these things you are going to study and very important topic apart from this you are going to study about photo synthesis this is very important topic you are going to deal with now just repeat it and then we'll uh, come up with our own uh, content plants are broadly classified into two one is terrestrial plants and the one is aquatic plants terrestrial plants means the plants which are present on land but you know land is again divided into uh, many forms mountains plains deserted one coastal heavy rainfall areas and as well as swampy coming to the aquatic plants aquatic plants are nothing but the plants which are present in water so this is again classified into three one is floating plants fixed plants underwater plants these topics you are going to deal in this particular lesson along with very important topic called photosynthesis shall we go yes the thing what you are going to see in our pdf form what you are going to get you will get a, if you want i'll just scan i'll just forward you the scan copy of the textbook which is very simple or you want this pdf what we have developed which is linked with to the uh, google dictionary and each and every image you are going to get a youtube video through your mobile hope you people take this 
similarly even for the ninth class it has taken a lot of time see ninth class you have uh, lines and angles this complete topic typing designing linking of it to the different uh, platforms see each and every chapter is almost 18 to 20 pages so everything is done here because of that we took this much of time so that the whole content uh, we are planning to to digital let's come to our pdf form of the textbook plans there is a vast diversity among living forms found on earth what do you mean by the word diversity diversity means many different types different forms all living beings are classified as belonging to one of the two kingdoms the plant kingdom or the animal kingdom so here all living beings are classified into two groups either it belongs to a plant kingdom or it belongs to an animal kingdom of course human beings also belongs to the animal kingdom the plant kingdom is very diverse it's a very vast right have a many a different range as we move from one region to the next we observe the changes in the weather landscape and as well as in the variety of plants and animals that are found obviously when we go from one place to another you are going to see difference in weather its landscape and uh, these two are the major things let us come to the types of plants now there is a large variety of plants on our planet some plant plants are terrestrial and grow on land while others are aquatic and grow under water so basically plants are classified into two one you call it as terrestrial this one and another one you call it as aquatic so what do you mean by terrestrial means land based plants which grows on land aquatic means water based plants which grows in water plants on mountains terrestrial again classified land mass again classified into many as you know one is mountains plains deserts yes or no coastal areas swampy areas and all so we are going to study now the types of plants which are present on mountains let us see what are the plants you are going to uh, see on mountains hilly areas you can see trees growing in hilly areas and on mountains are tall and straight these plants are very straight these these are not called plants actually they are called as trees so these trees are very tall and straight their branches are slanting which allows snow to slide down these trees usually have no flowers their seeds are enclosed in cones the leaves are not broad but are shaped like needles and have wax like coating on them which protects them from the extreme cold so on mountain there are certain points here you have to understand it is nothing but it's a how the plant uh, how the tree grows on mountains first thing is first thing is they are very tall and uh, they are very slant and straight and they usually have no flowers uh, the seeds are present in cones the leaves are not broad the leaves are not broad ante vedalpuga undadanmad but are shaped like needles have a wax like coating on them leaves are like a shaped like a needles so these are the things these are the characteristics of a tree which is present on mountain or the trees which grows on mountains some examples here that is the pine tree you have if you tap to this easily you will come to know you are you are going to connect to the video in youtube about the pine tree similarly if you tap to the other tree you are going to see a youtube video on this particular tree called the other all images are connected to the youtube uh, video you, you please check it in your mobile so here these are the few examples of trees present on mountains pine deodar fir ferns moss and lichens are small sturdy plants that grows in the soil on rocks or trees on mountains so what do you mean by the word sturdy sturdy means a very strong very strong build these 
ferns moss and lichens are small sturdy means very strong plants that grows in the soil on rocks or trees on mountains I have a moss here you have a lichen here you have fern here this you are going to tap um, to this image and look after into the YouTube now we'll come back to plants in plain a large variety of plants and trees are found in the plains these plants have branches that spread wide and have several leaves on them the plants which are present on plain areas not on mountains plain areas you have a different characteristics here that is they have branches that spread wide and have several leaves that is neem gulmohar people the these plants you are going to find only on plain areas not plants trees then coming to the plants in deserts let's see desert means what the scarcity of water complete sand area what are the types of plants you generally find in the in deserts some plants and trees have adopted very well what do you mean by the word adopted adopted means what you call swikarinchuta angikarinchuta that you are adopted means you are acquainted you are habituated to that particular area that is called adopted some plants and trees have adopted very well to the dry and harsh climate condition so some plants they adopted right to survive in harsh harsh means what harsh means unpleasant which is very tough the climate is very tough it's very hot there's no water at all harsh climatic conditions of the desert there is a very little water available in deserts the fleshy stem of these plants store water these plants the plants which are present in the desert they actually have a fleshy stem which allows water to store in it like you have a cactus you have kikar you have a date palm they have very few leaves if any a cactus has thorns instead of leaves this is cactus you have only thorns see here that helps to cut down or water loss and then coming to the next one plants in areas with heavy rainfall so this is again one different climatic condition you see under terrestrial plants that is in areas that receives heavy rain plants which grows in that uh, in the area where uh, it has heavy rainfall we see the growth of a number of trees and rain forests a variety of plants ranging from a uh, tall trees such as teak and rubber and cash crops what do you mean by the word cash crops means income source based crops such as rice and sugar cane grow in these areas plants in these areas have many leaves and remain green throughout the year so these are the characteristics of plants which grows in areas with heavy rain fall you have to remember this then coming to the if you want you can just tap to this image and you can see how the paper tree looks how the rubber tree looks how the teak wood uh, tree looks same same way like cotton sugar cane and rice as well then coming to the plants in coastal areas coastal areas means what near to the sea you call it as the coastal areas these plants survive in in spite of the salty water and heavy rainfall and heavy rainfall along the coastal line palm trees are common here coconut trees also grow abundantly what do you mean by the word abundantly chala ekku in coastal areas adequate is plentiful you call it as plentiful similarly plants in swampy areas what do you mean by the word swampy swampy means wet land burda burda ga unna place it is difficult for plants and trees to grow here as soil in each areas is very sticky and salty in these areas you know the plant to 
to grow it is very difficult because the land there the soil is very sticky and also very salty mangroves have adopted to such conditions by growing breathing roots above the ground that helps it to absorb air so there you know see here here in this picture you can see the roots are present above the ground which helps it to absorb air in that way mangroves are going to survive or grow in swampy areas then coming to the next one you call it as aquatic plants what do you mean by aquatic i told you plants which are present in water they are called aquatic plants plants that live under or on water are known as aquatic plants further these plants are divided into three types first one you call it as floating plants what do you mean by floating plants let's see here these plants have light and spongy stem which enable them to float on water plants uh, they have very spongy stem which enables them enables means which drives them to float on water examples given as duckweed and water water hyacinth water hyacinth then coming to the next one is fixed plant these plants have thin long and hollow stem that reach the surface of the water their roots are attached to the soil at the bottom of water body so that's why they are called fixed plant because they are attached at the bottom of the water body they have waxy coated on the surface of their leaves to prevent them from decaying so what do you mean by the word decaying decaying means that you know decompose decompose or you can say rotten now let's come to underwater plants what are the underwater plants and what are the characteristics of these underwater plants we are going to study now under underwater plant these plants have thin and narrow leaves yes of course you can see here that's very thin and narrow leaves the leaves absorb water nutrients and dissolve gases directly from the water through their surface so these things you know they dissolve gases directly from the water they absorb water nutrients and dissolve gases directly from the water these are the characteristics of plants which are present under water so underwater plants do not have stomata here the word given stomata stomata means is a small vent small holes like you have a sweat pores on your skin similarly you have a small vent or small hole present on the leaves which is used to exchange gases so that stomata is not present uh, on the plants which are present under water to absorb these gases from air so they don't have stomata so there is no point of observing any gases from air that's why they can survive easily under water roots are often lacking lacking means here i i told you inadequate very less and their only function is to anchor the plant to the ground what do you mean by anchor anchor means to hold so their roots here are very less and it is used only to hold the ground so this is what you have studied and then coming to photosynthesis photosynthesis as i told you it is very very important photosynthesis is the combination of two words that is one is you photo and second one you call it as synthesis photo means light and synthesis means mechanism to which plants prepare their own food that is called photosynthesis means the process where the plant prepare their own food is called photosynthesis actually what happens you know by by observing the nutrients minerals from the soil with the help of green pigment called chlorophyll in the presence of sunlight they prepare their own food what is the food that you call it as glucose that is c6h12o6 by observing carbon dioxide okay and carbon dioxide and water of course you have to balance you have to add uh, six six molecules here this is your uh, topic which is not uh, related to your class 
when you go to the higher class, you will come to know. So by just taking carbon dioxide, water and minerals in the presence of sunlight, they prepare food and releases oxygen and releases oxygen. This process you call it as photosynthesis. But whereas we are going to study now what uh, the thing is given in your textbook, let's see. Leaves are the food making factories of green plant. That's why you know leaves, leaves as a kitchen of plant. They come in many different shapes and size. Leaves can be simple or compound. Simple means single leaf, compound means I'll just show you, you have many leaves. Simple leaves consist of a single leaf blade connected to the petiole to the stem. A compound leaf is up to the separate leaflet attached to a by a petiole to the stem. So this is what you have a single leaf here you can see which is connected to the petiole here. But whereas here you can see compound leaves, many leaves. So that is the difference between a simple leaf and a compound leaf that is complex you can say. During the process of photosynthesis leaves absorb light from the sun. The, these are tiny holes on the surface of the leaves that allows air and water to go in and out of the leaves. These holes are known as stomata as I told you in the beginning where in aquatic plant you don't find a stomata there but whereas in this you find stomata which allows air and water in and out of the leaves you call it as stomata plants take in air rich in carbon dioxide through stomata so plants they take carbon dioxide through stomata the roots of the plants absorb water and nutrients from the soil and transport them to the stem the stem then carries the water and the nutrients to the leaves. The leaves use carbon dioxide and water to make glucose as I told you C6H12O6. This is the formula of sugar. In the presence of chlorophyll that is a green pigment. Why the leaves are green? Because it has chlorophyll pigment in it with the help of sunlight. The extra glucose is stored in the form of starch and can be used later this is what given during the process of photosynthesis oxygen is produced that's why given here oxygen is produced during photosynthesis so this is very important topic photosynthesis you kindly keep on reading it and understand and watch even videos then non green plants we are dealing with non green plants means the plants which are not green let's see mushrooms touch tools Pronunciation, tot stools and molds are non-green plants as they do not have chlorophyll. Non-green plant means what? There is no chlorophyll present. That is what the meaning of non-green plants cannot make their own food. They have adopted to absorb food and their other nutrients from plants. They take nutrients from plants but they don't prepare their own food. Why? Because chlorophyll is not present in these kind of plants. Such plants are known as parasitic plants. Parasite, parasites. This is important word. Parasites. There are two words here. Para means along with. To partu. Manaku viral emana ochindi. Ante mana body lo bacteria undi. Mana to partu a bacteria malo jivinsu undi. So that is called para along with to partu sites means undadam so oka life to inkoka life undadam you call it as para sites example mushrooms mold tot stool and tot remember this tot stool is very dangerous this is poisonous be careful some plants that cannot carry out the process of photosynthesis are carnivorous in nature what do you mean by carnivorous? In nature, carnivorous means they eat flesh, they eat fleshy things. Herbivorous means they like carnivorous animal. Carnivorous animal means the animal's flesh. Example, dog, tiger and other. 
herbivorous animals are cow goat and all so carnivorous so here in this sentence given some plants that cannot carry out the process of photosynthesis are carnivorous in nature they have modified leaves to help trap insects and use the insects as food they modified their leaves they have changed their leaves in such a way they simply trap the insect and use insect as food the pitcher plant and the venus fly trap are examples of such plant so here there are two plants given in your textbook actually there are many plants carnivorous in nature plants you will say it. the pitcher plant and venus fly trap are examples of such plants this here given picture venus fly trap and pitcher plant you just click to it the video you are going to see how this plant is going to trap to the insect carbon dioxide water and sunlight are not only the elements that plants need to grow plants also requires minerals soil contains minerals dissolved in water which are absorbed through the roots so plants plants not only require carbon dioxide water and sunlight but also it requires minerals so these minerals the plants are going to extract from soil and it dissolves in water and absorbs through the roots these are the characteristics of maximum all the plants then plants as food now plants as food most plants have a green substance in their leaves known as chlorophyll we know it we have already studied which gives them their color chlorophyll allows plant to absorb sunlight and prepare foods using carbon dioxide and water you know this is the process of photosynthesis what we have already studied animals depend on plants for their food as they cannot manufacture their own food of course animals they have to depend on plants because they cannot prepare their own food humans also depend on plants for their food requirements many people eat meat as well which is good source of proteins so we get lot of proteins from meat animals and plants are dependent on each other in many ways plant provide animals with oxygen food and sometimes even shelter find out how plants are dependent on animals already there is a question you can answer it you will come to know so th the process of depending on each other this this process you call it as food chain a food chain is defined as a series of living beings each dependent on the next as a source of food a food chain always starts with a producer the living being that produces food so here producer and consumer there are two things okay producer then ki antaru which starts which gives the source that you call it as producer and uh, consumer means which utilizes which consume that example here given this is usually a green plant all other beings in the food chain are called consumers so green plants are producers and other <coughs> beings are consumers that is an animal that eats a plant plant is producer but animal is consume consumer because it consumes that plant in the simple form a food chain grass is the producer and the sheep and humans are consumers these are the things covered in your first lesson you kindly go through once read once again and uh, pronounce it properly see the videos by tapping it on the images i have tried my level best to explain even the meanings of the words present in the content here in the paragraphs in between so please follow it let's go to the uh, next topic in the next video meanwhile stay happy stay healthy thank you